I would advocate for a lot more youth um, housing organizations um, between the ages of 18 and 25. Um, I feel like they're not enough. Not enough where they can feel comfortable and like try to get themselves together. Um, I'd also advocate for a lot more job training programs that open their door to anybody and everybody who's willing to work and trying to get their lives together because I feel like all the youth need is a push. If you don't already have that drive and motivation, I understand people's situations and where they come from. If you don't have that drive and motivation to do something, I feel like sometimes a lot of people just need that little push to get started. You know what I mean? And it'll open their eyes to see that, oh, I understand now. I'm almost 25, 26 years old. I'm not employed. I don't have anything going for myself. I'm on the streets. What am I going to do? You know what I mean? You almost need money to survive in this community. So why not have a lot more job training programs open to the youth that are willing to accept the fact that some of, the, some of them may fail and some of them may succeed? You know what I mean? Right. So it feels like you're just setting people up on a six month trip and right. having them come and go to you. Also, I would I would advocate for a lot of employers to connect with those uh, <laughs> like right. job training programs, you know. Um, just just take a take a chance, you know what I'm saying? We're we're not so different. We're we're it's just a lack of motivation, so to speak. They're kind of stuck in this sub reality of I can do whatever I want. I'm on the streets, and you know, every once in a while, it'll come a study where I'll get forty or fifty dollars here and there, and then I'll be able to buy cigarettes and weed and party and do all of this. I, I feel like um, that that shouldn't just. It, it should be a lot more just job job training programs. That's what I'd advocate for, um, and I'd advocate for the community to kind of connect with those job training programs. I heard, I did my research actually, that San Francisco has a lot more beds than Chicago um, in terms of, in terms of, you know what I'm saying? But then there's more housing than there usually is in San Francisco. Right. It's really expensive. Right. Definitely need more shelters like CLPs, sick of some, some combination maybe for the youth to go because there's just, there's not enough. Like I've been on some waiting lists since June or July and waiting lists are like up to two years and there's not that many to begin with. So that would probably be one of my number one things is a place to stay because all things are a little more possible if you have a steady place to be at. Even if that place might not have food, the f simple fact of having a place to be makes it better. That would be my next thing. I think they all deserve a link card. Yeah, yeah, food. <laughs> yes, food. Because there are days, like, I'm probably the most known around here to do it because I don't like to beg. I don't like to steal. I don't like any of it. I have too much country pride. I'll work for it. So I would go, like, days and days, like a week or so, and not be able to eat. So... That would be second on my agenda. Um, and real case management. And I'm going to put the word real in all capitals for the simple fact that we have places, we have the lovely DYC, we have the semi lovely center, you know, depends on your county too. But the case managers all suck. Not on their fault. Part of it is there's just not crap resources. But the other half is. There's not enough, or there'll be like one case worker for, you know, what, 100 youth, maybe more. And it's crap. Everything, we were trying to get my medicals done, it never got done. For the first six months, I was steady on people's butt. And then I was just like, oh, fuck it. Just fuck it. <laughs> it's not happening. So, like, real case management to be able to get the jobs or to get medicals or to get IDs. I think they should all be issued an ID, no hassle. Because my partner's been trying to get an ID for the last three months. 
and you can't get ID without ID. And if you're a homeless youth and you were kicked out from your family and your family's in another state and they won't have shit to do with you, you're screwed. And paying to be screwed at that. Which means you can't get a job, you can't get into school, you can't get a link, you can't get anything without an ID. The only thing you can do is do something illegal. And, you know, who wants us to be doing illegal? Half of us don't want to be illegal. But, I mean, you got to do what you got to do to survive. So, ID and case management, which would hopefully help you get an ID. Well, I guess, first of all, I probably wouldn't come to him just with a queer, queer um, outlook. I'll come to him with like a youth outlook. And I would ask him to organize the resources better and make it where the way that we receive it, 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 it you know, they have to have, like, I, w- I would like to see a tracking system that way you can see it if I apply for housing, how far am I down on the list? I mean, even in Mississippi, it, it's small. Mississippi is way smaller compared to, you know, even just Chicago. So, you know, they have ways that it's like, oh, you're number 52, call back in a few weeks and we'll tell you what number you are there. So you know that you're moving up the list. Whereas in Chicago, they're like, hey, um, I don't know which one I am today, so I'm hoping I got chose chosen or whatever, and I really don't want that. I want people to understand that, hey, they are helping. Um, and better treatment. I think that would be the second thing because, I mean, just as youth, period, I think some of the officers still look at color, and I hate to say it, but that's everywhere you go, though. Um, I see them all the time. They're like, oh, I think I'll just look at this guy and mess with this guy, and it's very hurtful. 